Hi everyone, my name is Andrea Flores Perez. I am an undergraduate student at the University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez. And this summer I have been working in Dr. Forrest White's lab at the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research at MIT. And today I'll be presenting to you my project titled Characterization of RTK Taurus and Phosphorylation in Response to Chemotherapy Drugs in Triple Negative Breast Cancer. So I'll start off by discussing the clinical motivation behind this project. Approximately every half hour, a woman in the U.S. is diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, or TMBC. TMBC makes up for about 50% of breast cancer cases and is characterized as a very aggressive subtype of breast cancer, which usually leads to poor prognosis and survival rates. Its name, triple negative, comes from uh, the fact that it lacks three essential receptors that are typically found in other subtypes of breast cancer. And because it lacks these receptors, there are currently no targeted therapies for TMBC. However, a potential therapeutic target for TMBC is receptor tyrosine kinases, or RTKs. RTKs are among the most established therapeutic targets in cancer. And this is because RTKs are essentially these receptors on the cell that stimulate important cellular processes that are essential for cancer survival, such as cell proliferation and inhibition of apoptosis. Among RTKs, one of the most studied subtypes are called epidermal growth factor receptor family, or EGFR. In TMBC, about half of the cases overexpress EGFR, However, when they try to target it in patients, uh, they have demonstrated poor efficacy because uh, there is a lack of markers that actually indicate sensitivity to these treatments in patients. RTK such as EGFR are mediated by tyrosine phosphorylation, which essentially means that they're activated when their tyrosine residue is phosphorylated. This procedure is highly conserved and regulated. Therefore, a quantitation of tyrosine phosphorylation could serve as a potential way to measure RTK synaglinal cancers. And this can be identified and quantified through mass spectrometry methods. In this study, we measure RTK signaling in TMBC in response to multiple chemotherapy treatments to determine potential therapeutic targets. We do this by treating TMBC cells with several combinations of chemotherapy drugs, in this case Taxol, which is a genotoxic drug, and Erlotinib, which is an EGFR inhibitor drug. To prepare the cells for mass spectrometry, the samples are processed 24 hours after drug administration. Protein is extracted from the petri dishes and then digested into peptides, followed by extraction of salt and impurities, and finally standardizing the peptide content across all the samples before lyophilizing them. The peptides are then labeled in order to differentiate between the different samples, then enriched in a two-step enrichment process to separate the tyrosine phosphorylated peptides from the others, followed by mass spectrometry to identify uh, those phosphorylated tyrosine peptides, and then quantified and analyzed through protein databases. The results for the study are as follows. 24 hours after drug administration, we can see that Taxol by itself seems to perform better than Erlotinib does by itself at low and high concentrations. However, interestingly enough, when Taxol is paired with Erlotinib, it seems to have a poor drug response than when Taxol performs alone. This phenomenon can further be observed when quantifying cell viability in response to these two drugs. As you can see, Taxol seems to perform better alone than when it's paired at low or high concentrations of Erlotinib. Mass spectrometry results show that when Taxol is paired with low concentrations of Erlotinib, it seems to have similar levels of tyrosine phosphorylation as to when Taxol is performing alone. In contrast, as to when Taxol is paired with high concentrations of Erlotinib, it has similar levels of tyrosine phosphorylation as to when Erlotinib is performing alone. This suggests that there is no synergy when these two drugs are paired simultaneously. And this is further observed when quantifying certain tyrosine phosphorylated peptides in these cells. As you can see, there is no synergy improvement when these drugs are paired together in comparison to when these drugs are performing alone. Interestingly enough, it appears that erlotinib is somehow preventing taxol-induced phosphorylation of proteins without actually inhibiting EGFR phosphorylation. These results could reveal novel insights as to how TMBC is acquiring resistance to these therapies and potentially help us design better targeted treatments in the future. 
Future work for this project includes determining the role of multi-drug resistance response to erlotinib and TMBC and assessing tyrosine and phosphorylation response to other chemotherapy drugs in other cell lines as well. Lastly, I'd like to acknowledge all the amazing members of the White Laboratory for all the help and support in conducting this project this summer. I'm grateful for all of you. Big thanks to MSRP for all their funding and support in this project as well. And lastly, please feel free to contact me about any questions and inquiries about this project. Thank you so much for your attention, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.